Hi, my name's Terry Pancook. I'd like to show a cone beam recall that's complicated. This is a case that I treated in 2003. Uh, it was a wisdom tooth, which I rarely treat because these types of teeth rarely have strategic value and a need for treatment. Um, but in this case, the patient had a long span bridge with the distal abutment having had a mesiobuccal root amputation and previous endodontics, which I had performed in 1999, as we were gradually migrating this patient towards an implant treatment plan. But at this period of time in 2003, bone grafting and sinus uh, lifting was less technologically advanced. So we were trying to protect um, the natural teeth and the occlusion and the existing bridge for as long as possible. Now, the patient now is a 63 years old. She's in good health. Interestingly, the bridge has been replaced. The second molar has been removed and the 14 site and the 15 site have been replaced with implants and recently restored within the last year. Tooth number 16 is still hanging in there and doing well, but as you can see from the immediate post-operative radiograph, I had some difficulty and I was very perplexed by the very short MB2 wondering if I had perforated it. Wisdom teeth are known for having very anomalous anatomy and um, this, this is something that could easily happen to anybody. Um, even experts um, put their pants on the same way and we're all prone to mistakes or adverse results in our treatment. And so this is one that I was very concerned about and I was very interested in looking at this case um, on a long-term uh, recall, especially now that we have a cone beam CT scanner in our office. This is a very interesting case. So what I'd like to do, which I think would be interest to anyone, as it was to me, would be to go through the systematic approach um, that I went through in reviewing the scan, looking at the different planes, and evaluating uh, each one of the roots to see if there's any recurrent pathosis. So let's begin. Now the first thing I do when examining a cone beam CT long-term recall is I use the oblique window in the software. Uh, I like to line up the axes so, uh, right along the long axis of each canal in the apical third and then rotate it like a top in the transverse plane. Let's start with the palatal root here. You can see that as I rotate around the palatal root, that root looks very good. Maybe there's slight PDL space widening apically, but for the most part, there is no radial lucency. The sinus cavity looks clear, and it looks like that uh, root is healed. Now, as I rotate the plane um, along the apical half of the MB root, you can see that the periradicular bone also looks very good. There is no signs of radial lucency suggesting lesions or disease, and the sinus also looks clear in that area. Interestingly, the area that I was most perplexed about is being perforated. It's, it may be a very short mesiolingual root, but uh, it, it may be perforated. It may have been so thin that I slid right through that area. Certainly on the 3D section, you can see that that is a very narrow portion of the root and um, it slid out. So it's either a small mesiolingual root or possibly a perforation out of very uh, narrow section. Now finally going through and rotating um, like a top through the distal buccal root you can see that the bone looks almost perfect in that root and uh, there, there appears to be no um, PDL space widening and the bone looks very clear. So for the most part I would judge this treatment as a success and uh, my 10 years of being concerned about it, um, I, I'm now relaxed. This is a very complex case and it, it's too infrequent that you see people examining their failures because for the most part it's human nature to not want to show our problems. But you learn so much from your failures. I implore all of you to look at your your most challenging cases and the ones that you have problems with and learn from them. This is how you learn and get better. I hope everybody enjoyed looking at a case that really made me sweat and I look forward to seeing all of you on my Facebook and my upcoming webinars. Thank you.